it's only 20,000 years ago that our world was in the tightest cold grip of the last ice age. We are in a world where there is a periodicity of ice ages. It's actually more frequent we are in ice ages than we are not. When a glacier is in an advanced state, it makes huge scars and deposits on the continents. It took quite a long time until scientists understood that this was transported by past ice. We'll fly up through here. And Geologists mapped out these remnants of the past ice sheets, but they just couldn't get a way to date those. And we should find a hole in the clouds to get through into main last place. Again. They could say, okay, if ice was big in Switzerland and ice was big in the US and ice was big in New Zealand. But they couldn't tell if that was one event, was it connected, was it one after the other. So what is new? And it's the entire motivation of what we are doing here. Is we are now able to date these original remnants in the landscape. We can track back what glaciers did in the past how it is related to climate change. And that gives us then the link that is needed to predict what is happening in the next 100, 200, 500 years. Well, first of all, the reason why we're here is that we want to pinpoint the decisive moment in Earth's history, particularly New Zealand's climate history, when uh, it, 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 when the climate warmed out of ice age conditions, that's the last glacial termination. And so we, we chose this particular ridge because it, it's, it's a decisive geomorphologic break that suggests the glacier that produced these ridges went from being robust and healthy to rapidly receding. These deposits have been recognized all over the planet, but it's been very difficult to date these deposits. Skyline is uh, two degrees above the horizon. Two degrees. However, within the last few decades, a new technique is, has emerged. It's called surface exposure dating. And what happens is when, say, a boulder slides off the margin of a glacier and lands in a pile of debris, it's then exposed to the sky and to the incoming cosmic radiation from outer space. And these particles associated with cosmic rays come and bombard the atoms that make up quartz in rock. In this instance, they blast apart silicon and oxygen to create something we call beryllium-10. And beryllium-10 builds up in the surface of the rock over time. And now we have the analytical methods in place to take a sample of rock and measure the number of beryllium atoms in that surface and we can actually derive a precise age of when that boulder first fell off the last glacier. Instead of hammering and chiseling, we use a small charge to fracture the rock and dislocate it from the overall boulder. Okay, fire in the hole. Okay, here's our sample. Oh yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, the that's surface good. is preserved. Nice quartz veins on that rock. Oh, it's well stuck in the ground, this one. Nice quartz veins on this. Yeah, standing right up. Really good. The boulders here represent a late stage resurgence of the glacier of this valley at the near the end of the last ice age. So it's the last the last gasp of the ice age, if you like. And so that's the reason that this is a very important part of the climate puzzle. Okay, quartz vein height one. The production rate of beryllium is dependent on elevation. The atmosphere shields the rock from exposure to cosmic rays, which make the beryllium in the quartz. So we need to know the elevation precisely, and so the differential GPS is the, the best way to do that. 43 decimal 824 
In New Zealand alone, we've collected certainly more than a thousand samples for beryllium exposure dating. We haven't processed all of them, but we have processed over 500 and determined actual exposure ages. Nice quartz veins. All right. Beautiful. So when we are taking the samples from the field, and we have them properly labeled, and um, we bring them back to the lab. And step one is you have to crush the rock. And when you have pulverized the rock, then we throw the rock in really nasty acid and digest most of it and take out the mineral that we like, which is quartz. Then we digest the entire quartz. So there's nothing left than a little yellowish crust in your beaker. And then we go through a very complex and tedious process to isolate the beryllium. With all this procedure, we start with kilograms of rock, we take 100 grams of quartz out, and then we take a few ten thousands of beryllium, 10 atoms out of that. So in general, what we are doing in New Zealand is we are reconstructing the local glacier record. We have a chronology and we know how glacier fluctuated. So now to put that into a climate context, we have to compare it to other records, like the Antarctic ice cores. When we do that, we just now are at a level that we can confidently say that glaciers seem to follow closely what happens with the atmospheric carbon dioxide concentration. Throughout our glacial chronologies, whenever the CO2 started to rise, the glaciers in New Zealand started to retreat. So we think that, that proves that there's a very close link between greenhouse gases or carbon dioxide and glaciers, which is actually a very bad news. Because we're pumping so much CO2 in the air, if that goes on, then we're having a big problem, much bigger than we thought. Overall, I'd say this research has far exceeded our expectations. We've got four meters there we can derive the most incredible information out of the landscape about Earth's climate. And there are so many landforms over so many landscapes that hold incredible details about the history of Earth's climate all over the world that I feel like it's just the beginning of this research endeavor. <laughs>